Okay, we will get started. So this is APA basics, and we'll be going over um, multiple things in regards to APA this evening. Everything from just an introduction to APA and MLA and Chicago styles. Um, we'll talk about the Marion databases, uh, APA reference page, APA in-text citations. You'll have a chance to practice citing your own. We'll look at an APA sample paper, and then we'll have time at the end for questions. Of course, you're welcome to ask questions, uh, as I stated, through the chat, and um, if you have a question on a specific slide. Uh, as you know, the Writing Center is uh, offering multiple uh, workshops throughout the semester, so you'll want to check out the Writing Center's page through uh, Marion's website if you'd like to sign up for anything else this semester. Uh, this session should last about 45 minutes, and, uh, and then, as I said, you can ask your questions throughout or at the end, and I will also plan on emailing you at the end of the presentation. Um, I will email you this PowerPoint. All right, so here are your three main styles. Um, as you can see with APA, um, what is important is the timeliness of your research. Um, so you want your um, in-text to include the date in text in MLA will not include the date and same with Chicago. If you'd like to see a more detailed comparison chart of those styles, you can visit the website listed there. Um, you, the best place to go for help is the actual individual um, manual or to take a look at it on the website, but you can go also to Purdue OWL, and uh, it's a wonderful resource, as well as writing styles for college students. Uh, also, be sure to ask a lot of questions because sometimes professors will have their own preferences uh, on how they would want your references page to look or uh, in-text citation or footnotes. Um, you just want to make sure that you um, get your questions answered from them. Okay, we're going to um, talk a little bit about Marion's databases and um, how you can find articles that way. So this is kind of telling you the, those look like moons, but they're supposed to be arrows. Uh, this will show you of how to get to the databases. And possibly some of you have already gone through the EndNote training, so you probably know how to get to the databases. All right, so when you get into the search, you would type in um, something specific to the type of research that you're doing. Um, on the left-hand column, there's a way to limit your search, uh, and you that is a choice for you. Um, sometimes you will be able to um, search through other library databases, so having the full text may not necessarily be that important to you, but if you do want to just find full text through Marion's databases, you'll want to make sure that you have that checked off, which will be on the left-hand side, and most professors will require you to be finding scholarly peer-reviewed journals. And there's also a box that you would check as well when you're on the Marion databases. Okay, this is telling you the example of the article that I picked, and it will uh, let me access the uh, full PDF. And also on the right hand side, it will give me the citation for it. So this is where my full text is available. And then right over here is where actually I will be able to click on the cite function and it will give me um, how to cite this. It would show me how to do it in Chicago, MLA, APA. Make sure you pick the correct, correct one for the type of research that you are doing. Okay, here are some just a little bit fun facts about the publication manual. 
um, back from 1929, and now it's in the sixth edition, uh, copyright 2010. Mainly people using APA, psychologists, students and researchers in education, social work, nursing, business, um, and your behavioral and social sciences. Multiple ways to do an APA paper it could just be based on one experiment. You might be doing multiple experiments or you might be pulling from research or experiments that have already been done and then placing them all together in one paper and that would be considered a meta-analysis. Okay, this is going to give you some examples of your most used, most popular APA references. Uh, so you may be citing a book, uh, an online newspaper article, or an article in an online periodical. To save space, I did not double space these, but in your references, you'll want to make sure you double space. I do have a small hanging indent there. Um, so this is the opposite of what you think of tabbing for paragraphs. Your um, first line actually stays to the left, and then you would tab the next lines below it. Also, you want to make sure in your references page that you put your references in alphabetical order. Okay, some differences that you'll notice here if you're familiar with APA would have to do with the titles. Um, for example, this book title, actually you just start with the capitalization uh, right after the period. And then as long as it's, it is not a proper noun, you do not capitalize it. You have initials for the first name and middle initial. And then uh, it starts with the author's last name or researcher. If you do not have an author, you would want to put, you would not, you would never want to start with the date. So you would actually put the date after the title. Here are some other examples of the references. And as I said, this will be emailed to you so you can come back to this for reference. Um, if you have an article from Marion's database with three to seven authors, This is showing the issue number. Uh, it starts with the volume, volume 47. And that is in italics. And then you do not space it and you go into parentheses. And then it's issue number three. And then followed by closing your parentheses, comma, and your page numbers. And this is showing you how to cite with three to seven authors, as I said, and it doesn't necessarily have to just be an article from Marion's database. This is also how it would look if it was a website or if it was a book. This is what it would look like if you had the three to seven authors and then down here, more than seven authors. If you have a work that is discussed in a secondary source, you want to list the source that the work was actually discussed in. If you're citing an entire website, you see there. Again, just paying attention to the capitalization. This would be a page, one of the pages in the website. And same here. So this you can see where we do not have an author. 
So we go ahead and put the page from the website here, then our date, and here's the name of our website. This just shows you, we'll talk about the in-text citation for these different citations uh, in the references, but this is what an example of what the in-text citation would look like. You put parentheses, I'm sorry, put uh, quotation marks around your title of your actual page and then followed by a comma, close your quotation marks, and then you have your date. And I think that should be the same there. For some reason, that was changed to 2001, but that should say 2014. All right, if you have a report, you have that here. Um, same type of no capitalization there, but you do notice that it is in italics, uh, maybe a blog or presentation notes. Again, these are things just to have on hand to be able to come back to if you do run across um, needing to cite a report, you know you could come back to this PowerPoint and it would you would have your example here. Okay, so now with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, you want to watch on the credibility of what you're pulling from uh, those different social media outlets. However, there may come a time when in your research you will need to cite something, let's say from Twitter. So here's an example. Uh, when it is a tweet, since you are limited to the amount of characters, you actually put the entire tweet as part of your citation. Again, we are talking about the citations that fall uh, in alphabetical order on the references page. And then here's one from Facebook. And if you know the actual author, you would put that. Otherwise, just the name of the user, the Facebook user, goes there. And some Facebook posts could get rather long. Um, you can just cut it at a point that you feel like is necessary for um, what you need to share. All right, so this is kind of compiling your social media um, in with MLA and APA. And instead of giving you a sample one, it is actually telling you, uh, okay, this is you put the initial or you write out the last name, comma, first initial, and that would be for APA. Again, just something to have so that you can come back to if for some reason you are needing to uh, reference an email. Just this is considered personal communication, and so you just need to do an in-text citation only. And we'll see an example of that in a few slides. Okay, we're going to move on and talk about what some of the in-text citations will look like. And there are multiple ways to do your in-text citation. In your actual writing in your document, you could just write out according to Smith and then put the date of the research. Or you could actually have it in parentheses, uh, which would typically come at the end of your uh, sentence having to do with what you are citing from the author. Three to five authors. The first citation will list all the authors and six or more. If you have two works by the same author in the same year, you want to say 
have one be A and the next one be B. And if you do not have a date, you can just put N period D period. For any of these and any of the other citations that we'd have, if there is a page number, you would just put P period. This would be a comma would come after the date and then you would put the P period for the page number. And if it's a mul multiple page numbers, you would put PP and then put your page numbers after that with a hyphen. Notice you close your parentheses and then you end your sentence with your period there. Again, if you don't have an author, you'll want to use whatever is first in your citation. So if it is the title of the article or the title of the web page, you will put that here and you will have quotation marks around that with your comma and the date. The way you do the in-text citation, if you don't have an author, is similar to the MLA in regards to the capitalization of titles. So when you would read graduation rates in the references, it actually rates would not be capitalized, but when you move it into your actual document, what you're writing, and it is an in-text citation, you uh, would want to capitalize that. And if this is a longer title, you're welcome to shorten it. This is showing you how to cite a secondary source. And how this will connect to my references page is I would look for Cole, uh, an author by the name of Cole, in my references page, and that would start my citation. And this is the personal communication that we were talking about. If uh, there was an email, this is where you would have it. Here are a few more things to remember about doing your in-text citations. If you have a quote that you're taking from a source with 41 words or more, you're going to, that's going to be considered a long quote. And you want all lines indented half an inch from the left and double spaced. Notice the difference in the period location. So at the end of your long quote, there are no quotation marks for a long quote. At the end of it, you put your period and then it's followed by your citation. Unless the author and the date were listed before the quote started. When you are writing your uh, paper in APA, you'll want to use past tense, um, saying that this author researched or said and um, MLA uses literary present tense. Typically, APA does not use footnotes and endnotes, and that has to do with making it the publishing cost more expensive. So it is recommended to do the in-text citations. Okay, we are going to give a citation a try. So if you want to open up a Word document or if you have a piece of paper handy. So this is an example of an article that we found on Marion's database. And below this information, I have provided you with a sample journal article. And I would like you to go ahead and try and uh, look, at, look at the authors and your um, journal title and your article title and see if you can um, put this in a correct 
citation for your references page. And then in just a moment, I will go on to the next slide where you will find the answer. If you want to put in the comments when you finish that, just say done. Then when I see most people have finished, I will move on. Awesome. All right, we'll take a look. All right, so here's what your citation should look like with your author's last name, initials, first name, middle, and all the authors written out there, date, article title, again, not capitalizing. You will capitalize if you have a colon in the article title or in a title if you weren't typically capitalizing. The first word, first letter that comes after a colon, you will need to capitalize that. So social justice is your journal title and that is in italics and that would be completely capitalized. And then you have your volume number in italics and your issue number with your page numbers. We're going to give one more try here. And we're going to check out this website here. I believe. Yeah. All right. Instead of having to go to the website, you can just check it out here. The sample website reference citation is below. Um, so based on that, go ahead and give that a try. And in the comments, when you have finished, please let me know you're done and we will move on.
All right, and here's for the website. Education research highlights from 2015 is the page we were looking at. Ediutopia website and then your URL. If you had no author, you would start with education research highlights from 2015, and right after that, then you would have the date. Okay, we're gonna spend just a few more minutes and talk about an APA sample paper. And this is uh, an example of the title page with the running head. You see the actual title there in the center. The running head is going to be a shortened version of the paper's title. Notice that running head is actually written out at the top, just on the first on the title page. The title should for the running head should be in all caps and your page number will be at the top right of every page. You'll put your full name below the title and the university. Um, sometimes professors will give you some specifics of what else they would like on the title page, and you would just add that below the title here. The title is centered with um, 12 point font times New Roman. And that's how that will, the font size will continue through the document. Your professor may require an abstract. An abstract is a brief comprehensive summary of the contents of the article that you are writing. More details about writing an abstract can be found in the APA manual on pages 25 through 27, and you can also visit the APA's uh, website for more information. Some more notes about the abstract should be centered, and the first line of the paragraph is not indented. Notice that at the top we have removed running head and you just have a shortened version of the title. You'll begin your paper with an introduction and then the literature review. The full title will come before you actually start in on your introduction. This bottom part starts to talk about getting into how you go about doing headings in APA. This is considered a level one heading and it's centered and in bold. And then for this level two heading, it's flush left and bold. If you visit page 62 of the APA publication manual, it will explain how to format the headings all the way through five levels and it's table 3.1. This continues on with the different levels. This is similar to the level that you just saw where it's flush left and in bold. And this is a level three heading indented, bold, and it ends with a period. Earlier we talked about how to do a, an in-text citation for a long quote. So this is explaining the block quote form again for you. Indented half an inch from the left margin. So you see it starts also where the paragraphs start. It is double spaced. And you put your citation, it will come after your final punctuation mark.
this long quote does actually end with quotation marks, and that's because it is a quote within a quote. So, but typically, um, if it's just quoted, if it's just in um, the research that you're looking at and it's not quoted in the research and you're pulling it out to quote it yourself, you would not have a quotation mark at the end there. Okay, starting on page 24 in the manual, you will have all of these sections which are described in more detail. The title will summarize the main idea and should make sense when standing alone. The method describes how the study was conducted, written in past tense discussed variables used in the study and identify your research participants. Results will summarize your collected data and provide sufficient analysis performed on those data. And the APA manual on page 32 stated, accurate, unbiased, complete, and insightful reporting of the analytic treatment of data, be it quantitative or qualitative, must be a component of all research reports. Within the discussion section, you will be evaluating and interpreting the implications of your results, drawing inferences and conclusions from them. From page 35 of the manual, it states, open the discussion section with a clear statement of support or non-support for your original hypothesis. This in your discussion section probably will include limitations of your study. And then in the recommendations and implications, recommendations for future research also may be, may be included before the references. And recommendations may be included in the discussion section. And this is what an example references page would look like. Again, double spaced, hanging indent, alphabetical order. And this is my personal references for if you had any questions or want to look over anything that you found in this PowerPoint. Uh, this is where I pulled the information from. Okay, and if anyone has any questions, uh, you can go ahead and put those um, through to the comments. I'll be happy to answer those for you. If you would like, I know some professors sometimes give you credit for attending uh, one of these Writing Center workshops, please send me an email at aadams at marion.edu and provide me with your professor's email address and I will make sure that your professor knows uh, that you attended this session this evening. Also, uh, after um, probably within a few days, you will receive a survey in regards to the information that you received on this training. And if you have a moment, if you could take some time and fill that out, that would be greatly appreciated. Other than that, this concludes um, the APA basics training. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put those through, uh, through the chat. And uh, if you do not, you are welcome to sign off. Thanks for your participation this evening.